So in this example, I'm going to show something that um, I know that some customers and some people in the community wanted to do something special with the grid system, with the grid object, uh, adding some perks, some events, things like this. So what they did is they used another grid object, uh, one taken from internet or even UI grid, which our grid is based on. Um, and creating basically their own grid object and everything revolving about it, around it. So um, I showed in the previous video you could grab the grid API and then do something with it. So in my example, it was something very simple like, well, I'm going to select a specific line which shows how to access the grid API object. And this is still a grid, standard grid, but some Sometimes uh, someone asks, well, I don't want to display um, record definition um, instances inside my grid because by default, the only object we support in the grid is a record instance, a record definition as a source of data for now. So sometimes they say, well, I would like to display something else. And we say, well, it's not possible. So. I'm going to show you how you can use um, the UI, so the object in itself, but with a twist. You can give the source of data you want and you can modify the, con the behavior. So for example, when you select a line, it will do something else. So basically you have the UI, you have some functionality, some basic functionalities that we handle and you just override some properties of it. So for example, here I have a record definition with a list of DVDs. Uh, and you can see that, for example, here I can filter by it. Or I can just use a grid filter actually to do it. So it seems very simple. And you could ob obviously do that with just the grid and pointing to the DVD record definition. But in all case, that's not the case. So if you look in the view, you can see that I got my selected title. If I select something, it will appear here, the movie title. And here I have a custom record definition. And as you can see, it has two things. One of them is a filter, which is here, if I want to filter by title. Another one is a data patch query. So that's an object we haven't seen yet, at least in uh, those videos, but Dave also did it in his tutorial. The data patch query is actually uh, an object we provide that is going to send you data in um, specific ways. So for example, when you get uh, record instances from UI, from UI code, you are calling actually data patch query. And this data patch query is getting you record instances. But what you can do is that you can create your own data patch query. And why is it nice? It's because you are going to be able to handle, for example, the start index. So do you want to start as a first record or the 50th record? So you can use pagination. The number of records you want to get. Um, if you have a query expression, so if you're a filter, for example, here, when I type term for terminator so and it will send it back to you as an object that is standardized the bmc standardization so if you are looking at dave salsa tutorial you will see a couple of data page query or you can create them why would be why would so here for example i'm getting i have a data page query that is <clears throat> sending me back the record instances from the DVD record definition, which is, which sounds stupid because I, ju I could just do in my grid call directly the DVD record definition and have the same data. But here you will see that in the code, I'm adding a dollar sign to my price. So of course it's a bit simplistic, but with a data patch query, what you can do is that you can grab data from a record definition. Then you could process it. For example, apply some conversion rate or get information from another record definition and enrich the data. And with this data that is enriched, you send it back to the UI. So you could have, for example, a list of clients 
a list of DVD, a list of something else on Amazon, a wish list on Amazon. So you get the data from those three different sources. You mix everything in your code and then you send it back to the UI in a data patch query. So you can enrich data this way. That's a huge thing behind data patch query. So if we are looking in the UI, so we have a custom grid view component that is accepting the data patch query name, a title filter, and output parameter is a selected title. So the selected title is here. So we have an output parameter for this one. And you can see that uh, this field is actually mapped to the selected title of my custom grid. This is an output parameter. So when I select, I want that when I select a line, I want to broadcast the title, the movie title that has been selected. So in my HTML, you can see that I'm calling Rx record grid object that BMC provide. And you have to provide a configuration object. And that's all. You have one line of code. For all this, you have one line of code. So in the directive now, you can see that you have to define an array configuration and pass a grid configuration object, which is here, a grid configuration object. So it's a mix between um, UI grid information, because we are using UI grid, and some BMC flags. So you can see that you enable filtering yes and no. So some properties are coming from UI grid. Do you want to enable row selection? So here I say, well, I want just one single line and not multiple selection. So I cannot multiple select. So we have some constant about it, but you can just use whatever UI grid is using. Uh, what is a page size? So page size means that uh, I have 20 records. If I scroll down, I have infinite scroll. So it should send back more info. It should ask the backend or oh, give me more. Give me the 20 next. Uh, I have the list of columns. So in my case, I want to display title and price. So it should match whatever comes back from the data page query. So we'll, we are going to see that in the data page query, we are going to send field ID, uh, title and price. And the interesting part is a get data. So by default, it's expecting a record definition. But here we want to override it by a data page resource with data page query. So get data is going to expect a couple of mandatory parameters. So page size, start index, so for example, 20, where you begin, for example, zero. Query parameters inside of it, you have a query expression. So query expression is whatever you type here, for example, term. It will build an object, a filter object that will be sent. And for example, if I type term here, what it does is that when I click here, inside my query params dot query expression, I will have something like title like term or or price like term. So basically, you will take every string column here and try to see inside of it if you have the term like term inside of it. So title like percent, term percent, or price like uh, percent, term percent. <clears throat> so here what I'm doing is that I'm replacing actually the title and the price by the field IDs of my DVD. So if we go into DVD record definition, you can see that uh, the price is actually the field uh, 903 and the movie title 9002. So I'm replacing simple cut title, simple cut like uh, person, term, person by simple cut, field ID, simple cut. The reason why I do that is because when we are going to query in the data page query, the record definition, we don't send, um, we don't use the field names we use the field IDs. So here I got um, an query expression that is totally valid that I can use 
object as you can just pass to my record definition and it will not work because it has the labels and I need the field IDs. So here I'm just replacing the field labels by the field IDs so I can just use later in my Java code the filter directly. So I will show that later. So anyway, you want to return, for get data, you want to return a data page resource object with type the data page query that you have in your, um, that you created. So in our case, it's um, return data. So in our case, it's com.example.datapage.dvd.datapage query. So I will show why, where the name comes from. Um, so you want to give the name of the data page query. Then you want to get the page size, which comes from actually here. So you don't have to do anything about it. It will do it for you. The start index. And those two are mandatory parameters, required parameters. And then here is a list of your custom parameters your data page query is going to use. In my case, my data page query is going to require, so DVD data page query is going to require a title because I want to filter by title and the custom filter, which is this one. So whatever the user decided to type here, I want to filter by that because when you're going to type termi and type enter, a call is going to go to the backend and say, oh, give me every movie that match uh, title like termi or price like termi. So this is just what you need to do to change the data content. Then you have a get record definition that is a BMC object that kind of match uh, the columns. So here you can still find the same field IDs, title and price, and you have to give the type if it's a string or if it's an integer or something else. So in my case, it's both type, it's string. And, it, and then you have some UI grid options. That is actually a UI grid uh, object. Where well, you can find more options, like do you enable select all, for example. So you, you should check the UI grid documentation for that. Um, and here, remember that I want that when I select a line, I want to broadcast the movie title so it can be catched by something else. So what I'm going to do is that on register API, I'm going to say, I'm going to listen to two events. When the row selection change, and change batch means that, well, if you select um, like several lines, I'm going to call this method, which is here. So in my case, when I'm, I'm here, when I select a line, I'm going to get the list of the DVDs that are selected using the so grid API dot selection dot selected rows give me the list of the selected rows. Then I want to get the titles that are selected. So in my case, I'm using low dash pluck to say, well, I got an object of the selected lines, but I'm only interested in the title. And if I have several, I'm just joining them separated by comma in space. Then I'm using an event manager that we saw in the previous video. And the event manager is going to broadcast the output variable, selected title. And it's going to broadcast that something changed for this output parameter. And the new value is this one. So this way, when uh, here I click on this one, I'm getting the selected line, which is Terminator 2. And I'm broadcasting that the output parameter of this object has changed. So this way, this uh, record editor that was listening to this uh, output parameter for this grid knows that something had changed, so it will automatically listen to it and display the value. So anyway, here is for the UI. Let's see how it works on the back end now. So we have a DVD object. Uh, we have a title and a price. So remember, that's the list of the columns we have on the back end, on the front end. So we will send title and price. We still have the decorators. 
and we have our DVD data page query. So the DVD data page query is an object that extends data page query from BMZ. So inside of it, um, well, we have quite some stuff. So inside of it, the idea is, um, so we create data page query that is going to extend BMC data page query. And what we are going to do, what is the goal here? The goal is we have a DVD record definition uh, with some data inside of it. You can see I have some movies. And the goal is to, when I'm calling this DVD data page query, I want to get the list of the all the DVDs. I want to filter them. So remember, because we can filter here. I want to apply the page size and the start index. So for example, if I'm asking 20 of it or five of it from index number two, I want to be able to pass it from the UI to the backend. And I want to modify the price to add a dollar sign. Because here, if you are opening this one, you can see that the price is two. It's not two dollar. And here you can see it's $23, for example, or two without the dollar sign. So that's what my Java code is going to do. It's going to get the data, filtering it by the title and by the start index and the page size. And once I get this data, it's going to happen the dollar sign to the price. So in order to do that, you need to do something. So first of all, you need to construct your DVD data page query. And the reason why you want to do that and using those, those two lines are critical. So you want to call the constructor of DVD data page query passing the data page query parameters and calling super. The reason we do that is because it's going to basically instantiate all your query parameters. So it's the page size, the start index, the filters, everything. So in my case, I'm getting page size from the data page query parameters. I'm calling the method get page size and I'm saving it inside page size. And start and doing the same for start index. So then I'm creating my data page query. So you need an execute method which is type data page. So it's going to return a data page object. And uh, here, are, here is a tricky part, one of the tricky parts. So I explained to you that I had several parameters I'm sending to the data page query. Some of them is a page size, another one is start index. And then, so if I'm looking at, um, Get data. So we have page size, start index, which are the BMC mandatory one. And then we have another object containing all your custom um, parameters. To get those custom parameters, you have to call a method get parameter value and title and the name of the value, the name of the parameter. So here it's title, custom filter, title, custom filter. Get parameter value, you have a method that is here that is going to get uh, get it from the query, from the page query parameters. You don't have to worry about how it works, just copy paste this code and it will do it for you. One thing very important to know, so for example, when we call the backend, uh, here is the REST API that is sent, application data page. Data page is uh, this data page query, we give the page size, we give the start index, we give the title. Um, one thing very important to know is if you are trying to get, get parameter value for the BMC parameters like page size and start index, you will return null. So for those two parameters, you need to use data page query parameters dot get page size, get start index. Do not use get parameter value. This is very important, this is key. For the BMC ones, just use the method we provide. For your custom parameters, get use get parameter value. So anyway, I got my, all my information. I got my page size, 
my start index, my title to filter with it, it's a custom filter. And now what I want to do is that I want to query my DVD record definition and I'm passing it the filter. So basically I want to filter by title. So which is here, for example, in case I put the filter here rather than here. Or the custom filter that is going to happen when I'm searching here. So for example, um, here I'm looking for M. So I have pretty much all everything, but if I'm adding at, it's going to actually do filter the title by this one, but also by this one. So two filters. So I want to get my list of DVDs passing the title and my custom filter. So here I've got get DVDs. So get DVDs here, I want to get the record instances from the backend. So in the previous video, I show you how to do it from the UI. And here is a version where we do it from the backend. I didn't realize I didn't show it before. So we want a list of DVDs that is here. And in order to query uh, a record instance, a record definition, you need a couple of things. So you need to locate the record cells. Then you need to create an object that is going to content um, to hold all the data page parameters to get a record definition instances. So then the next step is you need to get uh, a record definition from your DVD record definition name. So which is a fully qualified name of your DVD. So it's your bundle ID, column, and your record definition name. Then you create your data page parameters. So the first one is the data page type. So which is the one from BMC, query type, record data, which is com, BMC, RCs, blah, 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 record, instant data page query. So you say, I want to execute this record data page query. Page size is going to be the page size sent by the UI. We are going to apply it. Then you need to give the list of uh, the fields you want to get. So you have to get the field IDs. Uh, then you say the property selection. So you say here, property selection is holding the list of the field IDs. And then you set the record definition, which is this one. I don't think this one is used actually. So you can try this one. So here you say, what is the record definition you want to search in? What is the start index? Also, once again, we are using the start index coming from the UI. And then you have a qualification. So in my case, I have one that is hard coded. So it's going to display only the um, DVDs that are released. Well, the status, so which is the field number seven, is two, and two is released. So if I open DVD, if I go to status, so field number seven, I have a list of options. And for released, I have the value number two. So I want to display only the DVDs that are released. If they are pre-released, I don't want to display them. So this is my art coding qualification. Then if I have a string in the title, so here, I want to filter by that as well. So I adding it to the qualification and say, well, field, if the title, so this is the field ID for the title, is like the title. So I'm adding it to the qualification. And if I have a custom filter that has already been set, so by here, uh, well, if I add it, well, just add it to the lot. So I'm also adding it to the qualification. So then I'm adding it to the parameters as a query expression. So I have my qualification here. You can give a sort. So one, it's a field ID. Uh, I think if you want to search by reverse, it's minus one. Uh, you just put minus and it will invert sort. By default, it's ascending, if I remember correctly. And then you create a query parameters object where you just dump all your data patch parameters. Then you get the result. So you are using your record service you just located. You get record instance by ID data page. You give all the query parameters. 
and you have a list of records calling result.getData. And now this is a tree, this is an interesting part, the juicy part, is when you got all your records, you can see that I'm getting my DVD, I'm creating a DVD, and I'm getting the map record. So for every record coming back, I'm going to get one by one. So I say, well, I want the map record the for this field ID. So I'm using map record.get and the field ID. Sanitize me is just a little function that will return uh, an empty string if the object is null. And I'm setting in my DVD, I'm setting the title using this um, title from my record instance. And same thing for the price. And here I'm adding the string uh, dollar. So that's how I got a dollar here. So of course it's a simple example. I could do something else. I could just uh, change uh, from dollar and convert to another currency or something. Or um, do another query and come back. So anyway, that's not the case. So I'm adding it. Uh, I'm adding my new DVD to the list of DVDs and I'm returning it. So here I got my list of DVDs modified and I'm returning it as a data page object with the size of my DVDs, my list of DVDs and the data. And that's the only thing you need to do. And then internally we are going to use this size and your and the objects and we are going to send it back in a standardized uh, way. So you can use it for example in a grid or pretty much the same format uh, you use it you would use it for example as a record instant data page query. So here for example I'm hitting refresh. So you can see that we are sending um, in the data page custom filter, data page type, um, page size, start index with a title M. And when the value comes back, you can see that it's coming. It's we didn't absolutely we didn't absolutely do something like that. So we don't have anywhere total size. We don't have data object sending back our objects. It, we don't do it that way. The only thing we did in the code was say, well, return the data page with the size and my data. And our BMC code is going to present it in a way where you will have a data object coming back, a total size coming back. And inside your data, you will have three objects with price and title. So it's going to present it in a standardized way. And then when you click on it, when you click on the line, you will have Terminator 1. So this example is a bit complex, uh, but basically what you need to understand is maybe instead of creating your own grid system, uh, because you have a data source that is not um, a record definition, you could just use our BMC grid object and feeding it, feeding it um, a data page query. So inside the data page query, in my example, I'm getting data from a record definition, but it could be something else. It could do, it could be, for example, a custom REST API that you make to your ITSM or a call to a connector. And you would get the data, you would modify the data as you wish, and it would come back as a data page. So you would still be able to have like the, all the functionalities like hiding a column and everything, but the data source would be different. And then you are, you have also the option to add some events. So for example, if you want to do something specific, if you want to change the select all or anything, you can do it as well. So you, are, you would have to weigh the um, pros and cons. So one of the pros would be like, you don't have to create out of the box or like a new uh, grid object because there is already UI grid and maybe trying to match the CSS styles and everything. So it really depends what you want to do at this point, but this is an option you have at least.